salvation. We opened with the, uh, what it means to be saved. Uh, we need to now understand the process. How do I get saved? This message is not for you, me only. It is for the viewers, for the listeners, for people that want to know Jesus Christ. Even those that do not want to know uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, may the message touch you so that you can come to the realization that the Lord Jesus means well. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm speaking across borders. I'm speaking across religious uh, affiliations. I'm speaking across nations. I'm speaking so that we can get prepared in these last days. We need to know what it means to be saved. Like I earlier on alluded, the topic for this evening is the process of salvation praise the lord i'm so excited very excited because you know this is the pertinent very important uh, issue of a christian life this is a very important matter that needs to be taken seriously in each and every christian's life if you never knew when you were born again you must know today that I am saved after the process that I'm going to explain. You should be able to know that I am saved or I'm not saved. Hallelujah. There are seven steps that I'm going to uh, explain uh, that will make you understand that you are saved. Seven steps and I'll be done. Hallelujah. Okay. So these seven steps to salvation. Remember, the number seven has a great significance in the word of God. That number seven is a numeric that the Bible puts very important. As in Numbers 23 verse 29 and Chronicles 15 verse 26, we see the children of Israel um, obeying the commandments of going around the walls of Jericho seven times remember the number seven is a number of completion so the children of israel were commanded to go around uh, jericho seven times hallelujah thank you holy spirit uh, i just want to remind you on the importance of the number seven because i'll be talking about the seven steps the seven steps of the process of salvation. Elisha sent his servant uh, to go and tell Naaman to dip himself in the Jordan River seven times. The number seven, very important. It's a number of completion. On the seventh day, we see God completing the works. Very important number indeed. And today, I'm going to just walk you through uh, the seven steps of getting saved. The seven steps of being, uh, uh, have, and having to know uh, that you are a Christian. What do you, ha do you have to do? Uh, how, what things do you need to know that you are a Christian? Step number one, we need to understand that we are saved by grace. Hallelujah. We are saved by grace. The Bible tells us that for by grace are we saved through faith. It's not of works, but it is the gift of God. So grace in the meaning is the unmerited favor of God. You and I have to know those uh, meanings in order for us to understand uh, the, 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 the importance of knowing to, uh, that you are saved. You know, so grace is the unmerited favor of God. It is a state of reconciliation. You are standing before God and you are saying, God, I know I am not worthy. I know that I am not uh, uh, able to access these heavenly blessings. But because of your grace, Lord, I am able to have them. So, grace 
is the state of reconciliation. Why, that's why God said, come, let us reason together. Even if your sins may be as red as crimson, they shall be made as white as snow. Even if your sins can be as red as crimson, they shall be made as white as snow. This is a, a figurative statement the Bible has, uh, has, uh, has uh, used. So grace is a state. Uh, uh, as a state, it stands for um, uh, great redemption at Christ's expense. So great as a synonym or as an acronym. It stands for great redemption at Christ's expense. Jesus Christ came and died on the cross at, oh, for a very expensive, uh, a, a very expensive. He came and died on that cross so that you and me can access salvation. So at the expense of our Lord Jesus Christ, we accessed this uh, salvation. So grace, G-R-A-C-E, -E, some Bible scholars put it that uh, it stands for great redemption at Christ's uh, expense. And I believe it is so. I hope we are following each other. Step number one, like I area on said, it is saved by grace. You are saved by grace. For by grace are you saved through faith. It is not of your own works. It is not of your own doing that you are saved. But by grace. For all have sinned and have fallen short. That's what the Bible tells us in Romans. And they have all fallen short of the glory. But by grace are we saved through faith. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Titus uh, 2 verse 11 also adds, For the grace of God that brings repentance and salvation. It is the grace of God that will bring your repentance and salvation. So without grace, you will not have that repentance. You will not realize that you are a sinner. You will not realize that you have failed him. So the grace of God will bring that repentance in your heart. You will begin to realize that I am wrong. I am a sinner. Lord, I cannot match. I cannot even be in your presence. But because of your grace, I have access. Ephesians tells us that even when we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Even when we were still sinners, Jesus died for you and me. Oh, what a wonderful Savior. Even when we were still in our wrongdoings, Mumatipa, even when we were still uh, warping in those uh, things of the world, Jesus Christ died specifically for you and me, my sister, my brother. Step number two of your salvation. You are saved through faith. You are saved by faith. Hallelujah. And from the definition of faith, you will understand that you are saved by faith. Faith is the confidence, the trust. You know, the confidence, the evidence of things not seen, that is faith. Faith is having a spiritual acceptance of the truth, which is this truth, the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus is the truth. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me, says the Lord. Faith is believing in this God. Believing that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him and accord according to his purpose. Faith. So, step number two, we said it is being saved by faith. Step number one, being saved by grace. 
Remember, I am talking about the process of salvation. Step number three that you need to uh, uh, learn and uh, assimilate in your life is uh, being saved by confession. So once you have been saved by grace, you have been saved by uh, uh, you have been saved uh, uh, by faith. You need to be saved by confession. Confession means to discuss sins, to discuss faults to God. Your failures, you discuss them with your God. You communicate them to God. You say, God, I have sinned against you. And you can even itemize the kind of sins that you could be going in. You can say, Lord, I have been immoral. Lord, I have been in a sexual intercourse. Lord, I have been very uh, uh, a big liar. Lord, I was a thief. Forgive me. Lord, change my heart. I am nothing without you. Your confession is very, very powerful. Your confession is very important in the process of your salvation. Confession is helps you to remove burdens from your conscience. It helps you to remove those burdens from your conscience. Hallelujah. It is the way of acknowledging that you are guilty. You are not worthy. You are guilty. You are wrong. You have failed. You have admitted that you have failed. You cannot meet the standard. So, you, when you confess your sins, the Bible tells us that he is faithful and just to forgive us of all kinds of sin and heal us of all manner of diseases, says the Lord. Romans chapter 10, verse, verse 10. For with the mouth we confess unto salvation. With the mouth we confess unto salvation. Confess your faults one with one another, James says as well. And pray for each other so that you may be healed. What a God we have. He has laid out a platform, a process of salvation for you and me to follow. Step number four of your salvation is being saved by repentance. When the step one, two, three are followed, you need to realize that you need to repent. What is repentance? Changing one's mind. Changing and turning around. Forsaking all wrongs. Forsaking all sins. And turning your face to God and saying, Lord, I repent of this. I repent of that. And God realizes, uh, he comes back to you and says, welcome my son. Welcome my child. Thank you. I want you to begin to act, to see Jesus, to see God as uh, the only reason for your existence as you are repenting in your heart uh, after listening to this uh, word of God. Luke 13 verse 3 says, except you repent, you shall likewise perish. Except you and I will repent, we shall likewise perish. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. God is not willing uh, that uh, any should die or any should perish, but that they should come unto repentance. He is not happy in the death of sinners. Our God is not happy in the death of anyone who is in sin. He wants each and every one of us to access salvation. Access this salvation in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Step number five of salvation is being served through baptism. By baptism. Baptism means to dip oneself. To be dipped, plunged into the water. Submerged under the waters. Hallelujah. And that is the baptism the Lord is uh, talking about. Baptism has been known to be a religious ceremony signifying spiritual purification. 
by immersion in the water. This has been the process of baptism and, uh, and, uh, and uh, it, we are remi being reminded that baptism is a very important part of the process of salvation. Mark 16 verse 16. He that is baptized shall be saved, child of God. He that is baptized shall be saved. Acts chapter 8 and verse 16. They were baptized in the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 10 and verse 48. Peter commanded that the, the Gentiles be baptized in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Then we, we go to step number 6 of your salvation. You must be saved by the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 3, verse 3 to 5, the Bible says, Except a man be born of water and the Spirit, he can never enter the kingdom of God. He can never. So, the, the, the being born again through the water and the Spirit. So, uh, you have to be saved by the Spirit as well. Yeah, step number seven, which is the last step in this broadcast, is for you to be saved by enduring or endurance. And endurance means uh, the act or the qualifying, the quality and power of withstanding hardship. The ability to withstand hardship is what is uh, known as uh, endurance. A state of perseverance. So Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 tells us that uh, uh, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. To finish our Christian race, we must keep running. We must keep running, child of God. Matthew chapter 10 verse 22. He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. And second P, um, uh, Timothy chapter 2 verse 3. Endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. For blessed is the one who endures temptations. For when he is tried, they shall receive the crown of life. Those is a reward for endurance. You shall receive a crown of life. Hallelujah. Because God has promised us that uh, crown of life. Why has Pastor Ngambi taken so much time explaining about this process of salvation? It's a re the reason is very simple. Many Christians have just joined churches. People have just joined churches and they have forgotten that uh, uh, they need to be born again. Being born again is being transformed from your old self to your new self. Being removed from the conformity of the world into conformance with Christ. The Bible tells us in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, child of God, that you the old self has gone and the new has come when you are in Jesus Christ. To them that receive him, he gave them the power to become sons. Power. When you receive Jesus Christ, you have the power to become the son of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So this evening, I believe with all my heart that using that process of salvation, you will identify where you are. You will know that, ah, I think I need to um, receive Jesus or I need to uh, dedicate my life to Christ so that God can begin to live in me again. Remember, the Bible tells us that the only way you will know that you are saved is when your life has begun to live the life of Christ, not living this worldly life. Therefore, a child of God who calls him upon the name of the Lord will not be a double tongue. You will not play double standard. 
He will not, today he's in church, on Monday he's in, at the bar. He will not be, today he's casting out devils, tomorrow he is with the, the people that he was casting out devils with uh, in the bar, drinking. The people he was chasing out demons from, and he finds himself drinking with them elsewhere. Today is the day when you can decide whether you, you need Jesus or you need to continue the way you are. A Christian who says, I am born again, is not one who will begin to start uh, living a wayward life. You are known by your peers that you, you, you are in this kind of life. A life of uh, uh, pretense. God wants you to only save one master. And that is the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus. The only master. One cannot save two masters. So if you are saying yes, uh, man of God, I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I want you to come come, and uh, receive this Jesus. I will lead you in that process of receiving the Lord Jesus. It gives joy in the heavens. It gives joy to the angels. It gives joy to God to see sinners turning to Christ. To see people that are living a wayward life and changing to Christ. Why? Because Jesus did not come for the righteous. He came for the sinners to change them to repentance. So you could be out there and you're saying, yes, man of God, I do not know. I have not uh, received Jesus. I don't know the day when I, I can't even remember the day when I received Jesus. I want to help you to receive him now. Where you are, where you are listening, just pray this prayer and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart today. I have listened from Pastor Mike the process of salvation. Lord God, through these scriptures that Pastor Mike has read, Father God, I want to give my life to you. Forgive me of the many sins I have committed in my life. Remove me from the sins of this world and let me begin to walk in the newness of my life. Remove me from evil, O oh God. I open the doors of my heart so that you can enter into me. Change my heart, O oh God. Change my heart, Lord. Come and dine with me. Eat with me. Let me begin a new walk with Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, I want you to welcome you in the presence of God. I want to welcome you because Jesus is with you. And when Jesus is with you, nobody can be against you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have laid certain people into your bosom. I bless the works of your hands this week. Remember this week to pray in the evening, to pray in the morning. Remember to uh, thank God for the breath of life and pray for people that are in prison. Pray for people that are in hospital. Pray for anyone who is going through hardships in the name of Jesus Christ, including those that are at war in other countries. This is the heart of a believer. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. And every saint say, Amen. Thank you. Bless you.